In this video we'll be looking at the odd numbered problems from the quiz. In number one we're looking for the vertical asymptotes, holes, and domain. One thing we could do is graph it. That'll give us a good idea of the vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to Desmos. You could use your um, calculator as well. And I've entered, entered in our function. You can see it here. Well, you can pretty readily see the vertical asymptotes. You can see that we have this curve that's growing very large and this one that's growing very small. And it appears that it, both of these are approaching the line x equal 3. Likewise, on this other side, we see the same situation. So it appears as the lines x equal negative 3 and 3 are going to be vertical asymptotes. How can we find that algebraically? Well, we want to uh, factor this denominator. All right, so we have negative 3x squared plus 27. Remember when factoring to first factor a GCF. 3 will go into both of these guys, and in this case, I'm going to factor out a negative 3. I'm going to choose to factor out a negative 3 because it will leave me with a difference of 2 squares. Negative 3x squared divide negative 3 is x squared. 27 divide negative 3 is a minus 9. Now I can factor x squared minus 9 as a difference of 2 squares. This becomes x plus 3, x minus 3. x times x gives x squared. Positive 3x and negative 3x would cancel, and then positive 3 and minus 3 would be minus 9. This is my new denominator. Well, I know that my domain will be restricted by what would be 0 in my denominator. Well, if my denominator is this, then that's going to leave me with x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, or x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. I'm simply setting my denominator equal to 0. I don't need to set the factor x. I don't need to set negative 3 equal to 0. We know that can't be a case. Here, subtracting 3 from both sides, we get x is negative 3. And here, adding 3 to both sides, we get x is positive 3. So both of these values will give us a 0 in our denominator. So we cannot have that. Our domain is the set of x's such that x cannot be negative 3 and 3. Those are our values we can't have. Well, our vertical asymptotes, and we saw them in the graph, are also going to be that. It won't be a vertical asymptote if indeed we had the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, but we see that's not the case here. Again, our function is f of x is x minus 1 over, and this negative 3x squared plus 27 factors into this. This goes in my denominator negative 3 times x plus 3, x minus 3. You can see we have no common factor in the numerator or the denominator. If we did, that value would be a whole, but we don't in this case. So our asymptotes are going to occur at both of these spots, and we already saw that. x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. These are our two vertical asymptotes. There will be no holes because we have no identical factor in the top and the bottom. That's number one. Okay, problem number three. In this problem we're asked to describe the end behavior. That is what happens when the graph gets very large in the um, positive and negative x direction. End behavior. The question is this, as x tends to positive infinity, what happens to y or f of x? f of x is going where? And as x tends to negative infinity, we could put a plus here for plus infinity. What happens to my y? Those are the questions. Well, two ways we can go about this. We know from um, our previous discussions that we will have horizontal asymptotes. We know that if the, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of a denominator, 
we won't have any horizontal asymptotes and the graph will get boundlessly large. Let's take a look at the graph. We've got our function x squared minus 4 divided by negative 3x. You can see that as we get very large in the x direction that our graph is getting heading towards negative infinity and I could scroll out and you can see that that's the case. It is getting boundlessly negative. So as we tend to positive infinity in the x direction the y, the f of x is going to negative infinity. In the negative x direction it's going to positive infinity and you can see that as we scroll to the left. The reason being is we're dividing by this negative. As our x gets boundlessly large, dividing by a negative will send us in towards negative infinity. When we head in the negative direction, we'll have some negative times a negative to yield a positive. So we'll have some negative squared yields a positive, and we divide that positive by a positive. We get it heading in the positive direction on this side. So in this case, when x tends to positive infinity, our graph, our f of x, is heading to negative infinity. It's getting boundlessly small. Again, we look at that. And our, here we are getting large in the positive x direction, and our graph you see going negative. And in the other direction, as x tends to negative infinity, f of x, our y values, are getting boundlessly positive. That is the answer for number three. Okay, number five, we have f of x is equal to x plus two divided by negative two x squared minus six x. We need, we're looking for vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, holes, and x-intercepts. Well, again, I want to look at the graph. Basically, every time there's two things that we're, we're going to look to do. Look at the graph. All throughout your math life, they've been telling you to draw a picture. And number two factor. And, and in terms of order here, these are interchangeable, but you can do the factoring first and look at the graph second or vice versa but two very important things as we move forward in our study of mathematics looking at graphs and being able to factor some expressions well I'm, I'm looking at my graph here we have x plus 2 divided by negative 2x squared minus 6x hopefully you can see the graph appears to be in three parts basically we're going to have a vertical asymptote here it appears at negative 3 and it appears that we're going to have another vertical asymptote at the y-axis, which is the line x equals 0. Horizontal asymptotes. Well, one thing you need to know about a horizontal asymptote is our graph actually can cross it. You see that as we get boundlessly large, it appears as though our graph is getting closer to 0. And as we get uh, go boundless in the negative x direction, that is, as x tends to negative infinity, we're also approaching that line y equals 0, the x-axis, but it appears as though we do have a value here where the graph does cross that line. So a graph can touch a horizontal asymptote. What we're interested in is where it approaches as we get, as we head towards positive infinity and negative infinity. All right, so back to our function. Let us see if we can do some factoring. Well, hopefully you see this top binomial x plus 2 is factored as well as it can be. So I'm, I'm going to look at the, my denominator. x plus 2 will stay the same. Now I have negative 2x squared minus 6. You see that they both have a factor of x and we also see that negative 2. So let me see if I can factor out a negative 2x. Well, negative 2x squared divided by negative 2x is x because negative 2x times x is a negative 2x squared. Minus 6x divided by negative 2x is a plus 3 because negative 2x times plus 3 is a minus 6x. All right, we have it factored. 
Well, there are no common factors in the numerator and the denominator, so there will be no holes. Thus, all values that yield 0 will be x, all values that yield 0 in the denominator will give us vertical asymptotes. So I will let this factor and this factor individually equal 0. Negative 2x equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. Here, subtracting 3 from both sides, I get that x equals minus 3. Here, to solve, I divide by negative 2 on both sides, and I get x is 0. So we believe these to be our vertical asymptotes. Let's go back to the graph and verify. Do we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and minus 3? Sure enough, here is x equals 0, the y-axis. You can see it approaches, the graph approaches that line. And here is negative 3. You can see the graph approaches that line as well. Thus, our vertical asymptotes are x equals 0, x equal negative 3. All right, our horizontal asymptotes, what the graph approaches as we tend towards infinity. Well, you can see that we have a greater power in the denominator. When that's the case, the graph will approach the line y equals 0. The bottom is outgrowing the top. When you divide by something big, you head towards zero. Again, looking at the picture, as x gets large, we see f of x, the y value, getting closer and closer to that x-axis. We're already to the point you can't even distinguish. If we zoomed in a little tighter, you would see that it doesn't quite touch. It just gets closer and closer. And in the negative direction, we'll get that same thing. As we get closer and cl as x gets larger as x gets increasingly negative that is as we tend to negative infinity the graph is approaching zero that is our horizontal asymptote the line y equals zero and we knew that because the degree of our denominator was greater than the degree of our numerator that let us know that we would have that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero x-intercepts. Well, x-intercepts will occur when the denominator is equal to 0. Okay. Thus, we will set x plus 2 equal to 0. Setting x plus 2 equal to 0, we subtract 2 on both sides, and we, say, we see that we have x equal negative 2. That is an x-intercept. We can go back to our graph and verify that. We see at an x value of negative 2, our graph does indeed pair with 0, negative 2 comma 0. That concludes this video.